あああああああああああああああああああああああ Species Rhinia Juen Bagu Ani, rank 83. Extinct weeds that were there for four forefathers of trees. Fancy a world without weeds? While the prospect, prospect may sound attractive to golfers and gardeners, It is only thanks to the curiosity of an early 20th century Scottish doctor and amateur geologist that we now know what an extraordinary role ancient weedy plants played in the history of life on Earth. One morning in the spring of 1912, Dr. Will Mackey spotted some unusual looking rocks in a dry stone wall. Surrounding fields near his home, just north of Briney, a small village in Aberdeenshire, Scotland. Being a cu- curious sort, he took them home to study in more detail under his microscope. He was amazed to discover they contained an intricate cross section of beautifully preserved fossils, showing highly detailed systems of what. Looked like plant stems and cells. Nearly 400 million years ago, Lani was nothing like Scotland is today. Located somewhere near the equator, this was a geothermic,、uh, geother- geothermic s p a l a n d steaming with boiling pools of bubbling mud. In this hot, sweltering place, Giant geysers frequently spout huge fountains of scorching water laced with silicon from deep beneath the earth. When this silicate water landed on nearby vegetation and plants,、uh, plants it killed them instantly and quickly cooled, turning their purified. Uh, 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 turning their petri- petrified remains into perfect fossils of stone. The fossils of r i n e have since shown scientists exactly how primitive plants began one of history's、uh, most remarkable transformations from floating seaweeds to woody shrubs and ultimately into enormous trees that could colonize the land made. Land many thousands of kilometers away from the water's edge. The plant's trick was,、uh, plant trick was so,、uh, trick was to become. The plant's trick was、uh, to become vascular.、Uh, most of the land plants that have no roots, leaves, or stems and can survive only in damp,、uh, damp habitats close to water. Leafy plants and trees today use the design for their survival derived from these early pioneers at r i n e For plants, as for animals, life on land is dramatically different from living in the seas. For a start, land life has to grapple with the、uh, force of gravity, which, which has far less effect in water. Learning to grow up light against the force of gravity was no simple adaptation. The plants at l i n e show the first attempt at the solution was the development of a dead cellular structure called、uh, lignin, in which layer upon layer of tightly、uh, packed the cells、uh, step and interwoven to make rigid stems. 
These structures are what ultimately led to the contraction of that study constituent of shrubs and trees. Food. Ligaline has a host of other essential functions too. Even in dry conditions, it supports plants, a plant so they can stay upright as close to the sand as possible. Uh, Ligaline also uh, toughens stems to support tubes, xylem, and pollen. that can transport nutrients and water up and down the plant. Vascular systems stop plants drying out and allow them to grow tall and support leaves. Essential play liquids for the eventual evolution of most of the world's trees. Living on land had other hazards such as the sun's ultraviolet radiation which can easily destroy the delicate structures within living cells, DNA molecules, and can lead to skin cancer in humans. Early plant like Linophytus developed ultraviolet resistant spores that protected their offspring from the sun's radiation, even if germination was delayed by a lack of sufficient water. Such compounds have been common to all land plants since. If Lineophytes were solely responsible for the development of all the uh, technology needed to uh, needed to make trees, then their position in our top then then their position in our top one hundred ranking would have been a great deal uh, higher, but. Raniophytes mostly used use scales on their stems, leaving it to their descendants. The Euphilophytes, meaning good leaf plants, such as ferns, to experiment with the concept of hanging green solar panels in the, in the form of leaves from their stems to better catch the sunlight. Lineophytes were also limited by having roots that could only along the ground, rather than borrowing underneath, restricting their growth to a maximum height of about 50 centimeters. Underground roots that supply plants with water and nutrients and prevent trees from toppling over came with the uh, Lycophytes, the world's first true tree. Rhinophytes were seedless weeds. Their spores had had to land on wet ground for successful germination. A limitation that became uh, more significant as the arse's constituents catalyzed into a single landmass, Pangaea, see 300 million years ago, and dried out. Ultimately, the significance of these early vascular plants uh, was in studying the long but crucial evolutionary process of adapting to life on land from ground hanging mosses into tall, majestic trees, a process that took about 40 million years. A world without trees would have severely limited the potential for all land life including the evolution of primates, such as monkeys and humans. 
Also, the atmosphere would never have benefited from the enormous capacity of the rainforest to absorb carbon dioxide, a process which has helped to keep the earth cool and make it better suited for life on land. It was also largely due to the emerge, emergence of early vascular plants that oxygen levels rose high enough to uh, entice, lar entice larger forms of sea life. And that's larger forms of sea life to leave the water and to evolve air blazing lungs. Indeed, apart from uh, worms and insects, most of my animal life would have remained limited to the seas, where if not for the food and oxygen provided by these early land trailers. Rapidodendron. Family Rapidodendraceae species Rapidodendron sp 11 Gigantic fast growing trees that that fuel the industrial world. Go to Glasgow and there, in the southwest corner of the Scottish city's Victoria Park, is a small, insignificant looking Victoria Museum. Inside, however, the building opens out to reveal one of Britain's most precious and surprising uh, geological treasures a group of 11 massive tree stems, each at least a meter wide with loose that bulge and uh, buckle across the excavated ground. Across the excavated ground. These are naturally occurring. Fossilized sandstone cast from once about 300, 330 million. Uh, these are naturally occurring. Fossilized sandstone that cast from a once about 330 million year old tropical forest that stretched all the way from Norway in Northern Europe to Peninsula in the United States of America. The trees from which these stumps were forged, forged were once the most prolific on Earth. The uh, cloud mosses, of uh, which only a few species survive today, the biggest and the most dominant of all were long ex extent, Rapidodendron trees that will be up to two meters wide and uh, stagger staggering 50 meters high.
the Rapidotendron was like no tree alive today. One uh, peculiarity was that it grew extraordinarily fast. Reaching its enormous height was in just 10 to 15 years. For most of its life, for most of its life, it bolted, bolted upwards like a giant telegraph pole. like a giant tower of pole, without branches or true leaves. Green photosynthesizing scales grew on the outside of its trunk, which branched, out, branched outwards at the bottom, forming a network of uh, gnarled roots. Gnarled roots to provide structural stability and support. Only towards the end of its life did this curious, curious tree sprout a canopy of branches. Sprout canopy, sprout, sprout canopy. <laughs> Canopy of branches, and then they appeared only at the very top of its trunk. Clusters of small green photosynthesizing blades hang from this uh, late growing canopy, and unlike today's trees, these land pioneers reproduced only once in their lifetime. Thousands of small, light cones filled with spores fell from the tips of its branches like a Swan song uh, before the tree died. Swan, swan song before the tree die. Uh, most trees is landed. Most trees landed close, uh, close by. Also, some would have been blown uh, farther away by the wind, littering, littering the forest, littering the forest floor with uh, seedlings that would begin to cycle of rapid growth all over again. At least. Half of all the trees in the forest that sprang up during the Carboniferous period, 360 to 299 million years ago, are uh, thought to have been cloud mosses, Lycophytes, of uh, which by far the most numerous was the Rapidodendron. Dendron, since they produced no branches or leaves until the very end of their lives, these were trees that could grow extremely clo close, uh, close together without suffering from a uh, lack of light. 
The example was that the forests they formed were the most dense of all time. It is thought that up to 2,000 trees could grow in a single hectare of soil. Fast growth, enormous height, and short lifespans meant uh, these ancient forest floors were rapidly choked with layer upon layer of dead wood. Over time, the enormous belt of woodland that thrived in the balmy tropical, balmy tropical climate across the Pangi, uh, Army tropical climate across Pangaea was piled high with so much dead wood that no amount of bacteria, insects, or fungi could help to rot the rot the lot. As rapid to car carboniferous period, the climate changes brought frequent flooding and uh, Frequent flooding and rising and falling sea levels, so the wood sank into the swampy forest forest floor. Uh, each layer of trees being buried deeper and deeper under the ground until their remains were discovered just a few thousand years ago by humans. Not that branches at the breaststones had the slightest, slightest in inkling that this magic. A black rock, black rock originally came from enormous trees that inhabited 300 million years old forests. Only in the uh, relatively recent past, when when countries like Britain were in the zones of uh, a chronic shortage of wood, the people first start to understand that. The fuel they were burning came from the fossilized remain, remains of the Earth's ancient forest, called as the remains of ancient trees, ranging in age from 50 million to 350 million years old, buried in water, buried in water bogs. Water bugs and sediments that were starved of oxygen, causing the natural process of rotting to stop. Over an enormous tract of geological tract of tract. Over an enormous tract of geological time. These long rot, uh, rotted hulks of wood were transformed by transformed by pressure, heat, and chemical decomposition into the black stuff we call black stuff we call coal. Carbon from the air used by these trees uh, to build their earthy chunks was therefore buried underground gradually reducing levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. 
over time. This helped to cool the climate, uh, contributing a factor in the uh, numerous ice ages that have occurred over the last three million years. The impact of the world's cold deposition deposit on the planet, uh, life and people has been truly trans transformation. The deployment of coal in uh, Britain during the 18th century to power industrial machines, chiefly steam engines, uh, solved the uh, energy crisis that had come about from chopping down too many trees to make ships and houses and to clear fields and farmland. With the success of high pressure steam pioneered, pioneered by Kanishman Richard Tre Trevisic Tre Tre in 1801, came humanity's first ever form of fully independent power. Freeing this species from the limitations of alternatives such as animals, water, and wind. Soon, everyone wanted to enjoy the benefits of industrial industrial industrialization. Within a generation, coal was being mined in huge quantities, and all inhabited inhabited uh, continents of the world in a frenzy to feed the surge of mechanical modernization. Without coal, there would have been no industrial revolution, at least not when it occurred in the early 18th century. Also, coal is now the world's fossil fuel of choice since the invention of the internal combustion engine, 1880. As much as 40% of the world's electricity is still powered by coal today. Also, uh, coal in its processed form, a uh, process processed form, a uh, coke is essential for the extraction of iron from iron ore. Everything made from iron is the derivative steel that has uh, that has ultimately come to shape the modern world, from knives and forks. To skyscrapers uh, exist skyscrapers skyscrapers exist thanks to these deep uh, deposits of what were once the house's most ancient trees. Despite their great success on land, Repidodendron eventually became extinct because of competition from other uh, better adapted types of trees, seeds. Uh, trees, seeds, raw leaves, and the recruitment recu of other creatures such as insects to aid their sexual reproduction were just some of the innovations made by other species that eventually led to the Lepidodendron's demise. Yet few plant plant species have had quite such a profound impact. Mm. 
Rhipidodendron. Family Rhipidodendron CIA. Species Rhipidodendron SP. Rank 11. A gigantic, gigantic fast growing trees that fuel the industrial world. Go to Glasgow and there, in the southwest corner of the Scottish city's Victoria Park, is a small, insignificant looking uh, Victorian museum. Inside, however, the building opens out to reveal one of Britain's most precious and surprising geological treasures a group of 11 massive tree stems, each at least a meter wide with roots that bulge and buckled across the excavated ground. These are naturally occurring fossilized sandstone cast from a once past 330 million year old tropical forest that stretched all the way from Norway in Northern Europe to Pennsylvania in the United States of America. The trees from which these stumps were for forged once were once the most prolific on earth. They are club mosses, of which only a few species survive today. The biggest and the most do dominant of all were long extinct rapidodendron trees that grew up to grew up to two meters wide and uh, staggering 50 meters high. The Rhipidodendron was like no tree alive today. One peculiarity was that it grew extraordinarily fast, reaching its enormous height within just 10 to 15 years. For most of its life, it bottled, uh, bolted upwards like a giant telegraph pole, without branches or true leaves. Green photosynthesizing scales grew on the outside of its trunk, which branched outwards at the bottom, uh, forming networks of uh, gnarled roots to provide structural stability and support. Only towards the end of its life, uh, did this curious uh, tree uh, sprout a canopy of branches and then they appeared only at the very top of its trunk. Clusters of small green photosynthesizing blades hang from this large growing canopy. And unlike today's trees, these land pioneers reproduced only once in a lifetime. Thousands of small light cones filled with spores fell from the tips of its branches like a like a swan song, swan song before the tree died. Most trees is blended uh, clo close by, close by. Most trees is blended close by. Also, some have been blown farther away by the wind, rattling the forest floor with uh, seedlings that begin the cycle of rapid growth all over again. At least half of all the trees in the forest that sprang up during the Carboniferous period, 300 to 299 million years ago, are uh, sure to have been club mosses, of which by far the most, most numerous was the Rhipidodendron. Since they produced uh, no branches, uh, no branches or leaves until the very end of their lives. These were trees that could grow extremely close together without suffering from a lack of light. The result was that the forests they formed were the most dense of uh, all time. It is thought that up to 2,000 trees could grow in a single hectare of soil. Fast growth, enormous height, and short lifespans meant these ancient forest floors were rapidly choked with layer, uh, layer upon layer of dead wood, 
over time, the enormous belt of good land that trapped in the balmy tropical climate across Pangaea was piled high with so much dead wood that no amount of bacteria, insect, or fungi could help to rot the lot. As rapid carboniferous uh, period, climate changes brought frequent flooding and rising and uh, falling sea levels. So the wood sank into the swampy forest floor, each layer of trees being bullied deeper and deeper under the ground until, until their remains were discovered just a few thousand years ago by humans. Not that Bronze Age uh, Britons had the slightest inkling that this magic black rock originally came from enormous trees that inhabited 300 million years year old forests only in the relatively recent past. When countries like Britain were in the uh, Slores of a uh, chronic shortage of wood. The people first start to understand that the fuel they were uh, burning came from the fossilized remains of the Earth's ancient forest, called as the remains of ancient trees, ranging in age of 50 million to 350 million years old, buried in water. Uh, bogs and sediment that were stabbed of oxygen, causing the natural process of rotting to stop. Over an enormous tract of geological time, these non rotten halves of wood were transformed by fresh pressure, heat, and chemical decomposition into the black stuff we call coal. Carbon from the air used by these trees to build their the trunks was therefore buried underground, gradually reducing levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Over time, this helped to uh, cool the climate, a contrib contributing factor in the uh, numerous ice ages that have occurred over the last three million years. The impact of the world's coal deposit on the planet, life and people has been truly transformation, a truly transformation, transformational. The deployment of coal in Britain uh, during the 18th century to power industrial machines, chiefly steam engines solved an energy crisis that had come about from chopping down too many trees to make ships and houses and to clear fields and farmland uh, was the success of high pleasure steam pioneered by uh, cornish man richard trebisic in 1801 uh, became humanity's first ever form of fully independent power. Uh, fleeing this species from the limitations of alternatives such as, such as animals, water, and wind. Soon, everyone wanted to enjoy the benefit of industrialization. Within the generation, coal was being mined in huge quantities of quantities in all inhab inhabited the continent of the world in a frenzy to feed the surge of me uh, mechanical modernization. Without coal, there, there would have been no industrial revolution, at least not when it occurred in the early 18th century. Also, all is now the world's fossil fuel of choice since the invention of the internal combustion engine. As much as 40% of the world's electricity is still powered by coal today. Also coal in its processed form. Uh, coal is essential for the extraction of iron from uh, iron ore. Everything made from iron and it's derived 
uh, derivative steel that has ultimately come to shape the modern world uh, from knives and forks. These skyscrapers exist thanks to these deep deposits of what were once the earth's most ancient trees. Uh, despite their great success on land, Lepidodendron eventually became extinct, extinct because of competition from other better adapted type, types of trees, seas, broad reefs, and the recruitment of other creatures, such as insects, to aid their sexual reproduction, were just some of the innovations made by other species that eventually led to the Lepidodendron's demise. Yet, few plant species have had quite such a profound impact. Rapidodendron, family Rapidodendroaceae, species Rapidodendron sp, rank level, uh, gigantic, fast-growing trees that fuel the industrial world. Go to Glasgow and there, in the southwest corner of the Scottish city's Victoria Park, is a small significant is a small insignificant looking Victorian museum. Inside, however, the building opens out to reveal one of Britain's most precious and surprising geological treasures, a group of eleven massive tree stumps each at least a meter wide, with roots that bowed and buckle across the excava ex excavated ground. These are naturally occurring, fossilized sandstone, fossilized castone, fossilized sandstone cast from a uh, once vast once past 330 million year old tropical forest that stretched all the way from Norway in Northern Europe uh, to Pennsylvania in the United States of America. The trees uh, from which these stumps were forged were once the most prolific on Earth. They are club mosses, of which only a few species survive today. The biggest and most dominant, all dominant of all were long extinct Lepidodendron trees that grew up to two meters wide and uh, staggering fifty meters high. The Lepidodendron was like no tree alive today. One peculiar peculiarity was that it grew extraordinarily fast, reaching its enormous height within just 10 to 15 years. For most of its life, it bolted upwards like a giant telegraph pole, without branches or true, uh, true leaves. Green, green photosynthesizing scales grew on the outside of its trunk, which branched outwards at the bottom, uh, forming networks of gnarled Forming networks of gunal the roots to gunal the roots to provide structural stability and support. 
only towards the only towards the end of its life uh, its life did this curious tree uh, sprout a canopy of branches and then they appeared only at the very top of its trunk uh, clusters of small green photosynthesizing blades hang from this uh, late growing canopy and Unlike today's trees, these land pioneers reproduced only once in a lifetime. Thousands of small, light uh, cones filled with spores uh, fell from the tips of its branches like a swan song before the tree died. Mostly these landed, uh, mostly these uh, swan song before the tree died. Mostly, these landed close by. Also, some would have been blown farther away by the wind, littering the forest floor with uh, seeding seedlings that would begin to cycle of uh, rapid growth all over again. At least half of all the trees in the forest that sprang up during the Carboniferous period. 360 to 299 million years ago are uh, thought to have been club mosses, the cophytes, of which by far the most numerous was the lepidodendron, since they produce no branches or leaves until the very end of their lives. Uh, these were trees that grow extremely close together without suffering from a lack of light. The result was that the forests they formed were the most dense of all time. It is thought that up to 2,000 trees could go in a single hectare of soil. Fast, fast growth, enormous height, and short lifespans, uh, short lifespans uh, meant these ancient forest floors were rapidly choked with layer uh, upon uh, with layer uh, upon layer of dead wood. Over time, the enormous belt of woodland that thrived in the balmy tropical climate across Pangaea was piled high with so much dead wood that no amount of bacteria, uh, insects, or fungi could uh, could hard to rot the, rot the lot. As rapid Carboniferous period climate changes brought frequent flooding and rising and falling sea levels, so the wood sank into the swampy forest floor, each layer of trees being bullied deeper and deeper under the ground until their remains were discovered just a few thousand years ago by humans. Not that bronze as uh, uh, Britons had the slightest uh, inkling Not that bronze-edge versions had the slightest inkling, inkling that this magic black rock originally came from enormous trees that inhabited 300 million year old forests only in the relatively recent past when 
when countries like Britain were in the zones of a uh, chronic shortage of food. Uh, did people first start to understand that that the fuel they were uh, burning came from the fossilized remains of the Earth's ancient forest, called as the remains of ancient trees, ranging in age from 50 million to 350 million years old, buried in water, bogs, and sediment that were stabbed of oxygen causing the neutral, a natural process of rotting to stop. Over an almost tract of geological time, these no, non-rotted hulks of wood were transformed by uh, pressure, heat, and chemical decomposition into the black stuff we call, we call coal. Carbon from the air used by these trees to build their earthy trunks was therefore fully underground, gradually reducing levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Over time, this helped to cool the climate, a contributing factor in the uh, numerous ice ages that have occurred over the last three million years. Transfer the pressures, heat, and chemical decomposition into the black stuff we call coal. Carbon from the air used by these trees to uh, used by these trees to build the would be uh, used by the trees to build their woody trunks was therefore fully the underground, gradually reducing levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. As a George got time, these not, lot, not lotted hawks of wood were transformed by pressure, heat, and chemical decomposition into the black a stuff we call coal, carbon from the air, used by these trees to build their hoodie trunks. Hoodie trunks were therefore buried underground. And that were that were stirred up oxen causing the natural process of rotting to stop over an almost track of geological time. These non rotted hulks of wood were transformed by pressure, heat, and chemical decomposition into the black stuff we call coal, uh, carbon from the air used by these carbon from the air used by these trees to build their carbon from the air, carbon from the air used by these trees uh, built their woody trunks. Carbon from the air used by used by these trees to build their woody trunks, but therefore buried underground, gradually reducing levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Over time, this helped to cool the uh, cool the climate, a contributing factor in the numerous ice ages that have occurred over the last uh, three million years. The impact of the world's cold deposit on the planet, life and people has been truly transformational. The deployment of coal and people has been truly
for the choice. Coal in Britain during the 18th century to power industrial machines, chiefly steam, steam engines, uh, solved an energy crisis that had come about from chopping down too many trees to make ships and houses and to clear fields and farmland. Was the success of high pressure steam, pioneered by Cornishman Richard Trevithick in 1801. Uh, came even to the first ever form of fully independent uh, power, uh, freeing this species from the limitations of alternatives such as such as animals, water, and wind. Soon, everyone wanted to enjoy the benefits of industrial industrialized industrial industrialization. Was in a generation coal was being mined in huge quantities in all inhabited the continents of the world in a frenzy to feed the surge of me uh, mechanical modernization. Without coal, there would have been no industrial revolution, at least not when it occurred in the early 18th century. Also, all is now the world's fossil, world's fossil fuel of uh, choice since the invention of the internal combustion engine uh, 1880 as much as 40 percent of the world's electricity is still uh, powered by coal today also coal in its processed uh, form choke is essential for the extraction of iron uh, from its processed form coke is essential for the extraction of iron from iron ore everything made from iron and its uh, derivative steel that has ultimately come to shape the modern world from knives and forks to skyscrapers exists thanks to these deep uh, deposits of uh, what were once the earth's most ancient trees. Uh, despite their great success on land, Rapid Vendron eventually became extinct because of composition from as a uh, better adapted types of trees. Seas, broad, uh, broad leaves, and the recruitment of other creatures such as insects to aid their sexual reproduction were just some of the innovations made by other species that eventually led to the Rapidodendron's demise. Yet, Few plant species have had quite such a profound impact. 